Hey everyone, let's talk about the two fundamental types of polymer arrangements. These two fundamental arrangements are called crystalline and amorphous. So, in this video, we'll talk about what these two arrangements are. Then, in the next video, we'll spend some time and talk about the general trends in properties that each of these polymer morphologies exhibit. These arrangements are formed as a heated polymer is cooled. So, imagine that we have our ball of molten polymer. Since the temperature is high here, there's clearly a lot of energy present in the system. This allows the polymers to move freely past and around its neighboring polymers. However, what happens when we turn the heat to our system off? Well, over time, the energy will be distributed convectively to the air surrounding our pot, and the polymers will have less and less energy to move around and past one another. Therefore, at some point, the polymer will begin to become either crystalline or amorphous. However, in both arrangements, these polymers are not actively mobile, and the polymer mass has went from a liquid to a solid. Let's begin with the crystalline arrangement. Crystalline regions in a polymer are densely folded and neatly packaged crystals. They are called crystalline, which stems from the area of study, crystallography. Other than polymers, there are many other solids that can present crystalline molecular arrangements, such as diamonds, salts, and even ice. All these solids have reoccurring lattices, which is basically just an ideal arrangement of the atoms in the solid. Through such, you can think of this like the polymers fitting better together. So, to keep it simple, let's look at polypropylene, sometimes referred to as PP, which you may know as pop bottle caps, among other things. This rather simple polymer exhibits high crystallinity due to its alternating methyl groups when forming a polymer chain. However, as there are different forms of the same polymers, the amount of crystallinity of a polymer depends on numerous factors. Firstly, depending on how quickly the polymer is cooled from the liquid state will largely impact the crystallinity of the solid. If we quickly cooled polymers, for example, they do not have time to rearrange themselves into an energy ideal configuration. They are essentially just becoming locked in space. Whereas if we cooled the polymer much, much slower, then the polymer chains could still move and slide around each other and reorienting themselves to a lower energy state. I should also note that you may see polymers that exhibit relatively large amounts of crystallinity as semi-crystalline polymers, as this is the proper name. This is because no polymer is really 100% crystalline. They're all on a spectrum of zero to say 80 or 90. So that should give you a good introduction to crystalline polymers. But what about amorphous polymers? Well, if a crystalline region is an area in a polymer, where the polymers are neatly folded, an amorphous polymer must be an area where this isn't the case. An amorphous polymer is just a region in the polymer where there's no structured layout to the polymers. They're just random. Amorphous means without a shape, which is fitting and an easy way to remember what it is. In the earlier example, when we were discussing the cooling of a polymer, quickly cooling the polymer decreases the amount of crystalline regions in the polymer and therefore this is increasing the amount of amorphous regions that are present. So, what causes some polymers to become more crystalline than others? Well, we already talked about one earlier. That is how quickly we can cool the polymer from a liquid state to a solid. But, what other factors will affect our percentage of crystallinity? Well, there are actually several factors that largely impact our crystallinity, so let's talk about those now. Firstly, we have the polarity of the polymer. Polar molecules are attracted to one another, and therefore it makes sense that this will lead to a higher level of crystallinity, as the molecules from the same or another polymer chain can better bind and compress themselves into a crystalline formation. Secondly, the flexibility of our polymers is also very important. This can be observed best in low-density polyethylene versus high-density polyethylene. LDPE, low density polyethylene, is a straight and therefore very flexible polymer. That is why plastic bags are so flexible. Whereas things like HDPE, high density polyethylene, such as detergent bottles, are very hard and rigid. In the HDPE, the polymers are not at all flexible and are more fixed in a given position, unable to move, thus more crystalline. Thirdly, a large side chain on a polymer can generally limit the polymer's ability to be mobile, and one would think that this would lead to a more crystalline polymer, however, this is a trade-off with the reduction in the attraction forces between the main polymer chains. Fourth, 
The regularity of the structure is also important. So, if we have a syndiotactic or an isotactic polymer, we are able to package our polymers closer together, whereas an atactic polymer cannot rearrange itself into an ideal configuration to achieve crystallinity. I will leave a link in the description about these terms in case you missed that video. As you can imagine, this balance between these many factors can get quite complex in large polymers. As I stated earlier in the coming videos, we will talk about the pros and cons of having higher quantities of either crystalline or amorphous regions in your polymer. Thank you for checking out this video and I hope it helped your understanding of what crystalline and amorphous polymers are. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our Patreon page to support the channel. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.